Welcome back to I'm Still Here. I'm Larry. And I'm Heather. In 1998, at the age of 26, I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer. It changed everything for us, but I'm still here. You are. I am. You're a little out of the picture. You should come this way. This is where my chair is. I know. There's something about the camera. Uh, our equipment is... <laughs> it doesn't want to include you. I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, I've been thinking, again, shocker, I know, mm -hmm. but... Um, and I, you know, I've been working on a, a newer book or whatever, and I've been, I'm kind of solidly through most of the proposal. And, um, it occurred to me this week that it just, I need to kind of change my audience for it. But it really, what I was thinking about was this whole idea of why not me. Okay. And why not me? As it relates to cancer, I was thinking about in the very beginning, you know, everybody was like, people want to know why. Why did you get cancer? Like, why? What did people, you... People, we wanted to know that. Well, okay. <laughs> but, I, but I feel like in some ways, when we look at it, it's like, when you, you know, why did you get it? Do you have any risk factors? Do you do this? Did you have... Well, it's because every doctor's appointment, that's what they went through, right? Right. They were like, did you, did you? And it was kind of no to everything. Yeah. So Which then they went, hmm. Right. So, but the, like, the more that that goes on, the more you kind of go, well, wait a second, there's nothing I can do about this. Why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then I was thinking about... Well, then, what ahead. was another one of your mantras back then well as I said we're not saying why me rather we're saying try me right and and I yeah and now that I've been tried mm -hmm. and I'm not quite wanting to like I don't know fist fight in the same way mm -hmm. I think it's just why not me okay so you, tell us more so why not me just means like this world is random this whole it I mean, why not me? It could be any of us mm -hmm. for cancer. I feel like what I realize now is that the longer we've lived and the more things that have occurred in our lives, maybe we always have the opportunity to say, why not me? Yeah, there's a couple of ways to say why not me, right? Sure. A couple of different meanings to why not me and why not me? Yeah. Two di completely different meanings to those same sentences on what you emphasize in that. You are not saying, why not me? I mean, no. I'm rambling. No, well, I just, I think you're right. I think, so basically what this has, what has occurred to me is that this is also just sort of a, we, however we choose to look at things in terms of, life circumstances right okay the, the things yeah. that come along in life so um and i think some of that is has been kind of do we choose to take on something that maybe we don't know anything about or iv wants ellie's attention so badly right now. only during podcasts <laughs> oh my gosh oh it's so funny but do we, so like, how do we view the things that come our way? Or maybe the things that occur to us, like ideas or dreams that we think, well, why not me? Why can't I do it? Or what? what and we're we, usually pretty good at come up, coming up with reasons, right? Of what? Why not me? <laughs> well, I can give you a whole list of why not me. Well, yes or no. I think, I mean, when I look at the, can the cancer stuff, I go, there's... I can't control the diagnosis. So I, and I'm not any more special than anybody else. I'm not unique in any way in that I, it just, it was, it's random, as random as it can be. And it's then my challenge to take on, I guess, or my, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in uh, lamenting the fact that I'm the one with cancer. Right? Yes. Um, that is a very positive attitude towards something as scary as that diagnosis. 
Yeah, I guess I... Can everybody do that? I don't know, but the, yeah. I feel like the alternative to that is what? <laughs> is, is, yes. The alternative to that is having cancer and being in a pit of despair or being angry or being... Which I don't know because, honestly, you're you're one of the only people I know personally, intimately, that's had cancer. Yeah. So I don't know how other people... Is it the norm, the pit of despair, at least for a little while? Or is it the norm that people eventually kind of buck up and... I don't. Uh, I don't know the answer. Yeah, and I, it certainly isn't just cancer, right? There's a lot of different. Yes. I mean, illnesses and also just like circumstances. Yes. Circumstances. Yep. That, For sure. That change that. I don't know. I, I just, don't either. Uh, I feel like that kind of that thought of why not me has kind of led me through. <laughs> through life right in many different mantras yeah all kind of leading back to the same thing is suck it up buttercup yeah yeah to a certain extent you know you've been dealt this hand there's so many kind of quotes that we could put to this and i think at times we all and you have kind of the the why is me why me and the woe is me and um dang it, you know, I, I'm watching everybody else and I can't do that or I'm watching everybody else and I shouldn't do that and, and all that. that That's just, I think, human nature. Yeah. But then you've always come around to, no, fuck that. Let's go. You yeah. know, you, you, you've kind of had that attitude and many different times in the last 20-some years, just from my observation. Yeah, I think so. I think... I think it's kind of realizing that uh, life happens and it is sort of how we choose to react to it, right? And um, yes. and also just kind of having to deal with or think about that I guess I'm not willing to say that I can't do something or that I won't, uh, it's not possible. Um, the next thing that I think about, like, is when we were trying to adopt Ty and how many, like, roadblocks got put in the way of that. Mm -hmm. And I remember somebody saying to us, like, maybe it's just not meant to be. (laughs) And me thinking, I just can't accept that. So part of me goes, like, am I just too hard-headed to to move on from something that you are more hard headed than most people. That is a true statement. Okay. And that's been a positive in our life, in our relationship, in, in all of this. I mean, that's a good thing for me and for what I'm looking for and for your situation. But yes, you are definitely more hard headed than a lot of people. So what does hard headed really mean? I, well, another way of put it is uh, driven. Driven is a uh, another way of saying hard-headed. You could substitute a lot of them in a lot of situations. Um, I was the word perseverance comes to mind. Another one, yes. It's it's those words that could all mean the same thing depending on the circumstance. Stubborn. Uh, some of them are have negative connotations. Some of them have positive connotations. Yeah. Some of them have negative connotations if you're a woman. Some of them have, yeah. you know, those kind of things. Uh, but that is part of the reason, at least, why you're still here. Is because of those. Yeah, I think when I think about, like, being... I don't even know if it's driven, but being able to persevere. I think I, again, just within myself, I think it doesn't take anything... It doesn't take a special attribute or anything, any skill. There's no skill required. No, but I think we both have a little bit of, (laughs) if we feel like we're, if we feel like we're getting the short end of something, or if we feel like we're not being treated right, if we feel like we're like, okay, fuck you. 
you better watch it. <laughs> and we both, it gets our inside just something up and like, no, I know how it should be and I'm going to have it how it should be. Yeah. Especially in the medical field. <laughs> well, in the medical field, in the things that I've wanted in life. I think for me, I always, it, it becomes about me, but then it becomes about the bigger, the greater good of like, if this is a problem for me, then it's a problem for a lot of people. And how mm. can I, because I so love to like advocate and And that's your justice, angle. My angle is you know? just no for my wife or for my <laughs> right. kids or for, right. no, this is the way it's going to be type of. Right. And you are, Yes doing it for 10,000 other people. Yeah, like if we can fix a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just was, I, I just think that the whole why not me thing, which is basically like <laughs> the opposite of, of why me, you know, right? It is. I don't, you know, recently somebody else said something to me about um, somebody is sick and it's like, why would it happen to them? And it's like, I don't. I just don't know if we can spend the time asking those questions, you know. Because there's never an answer. Right. Well, and do good things happen to bad people? And are there bad people? Or do bad things happen to good people? And are there good people? Like, we have this ranking system that I kind of feel like is so much just us trying to understand the world. But really, it's, it's us making it more... It's us justifying our the decisions that we make throughout the day and the way we live our lives and right all of we, those things. We were given a frontal lobe, <laughs> and we like to use it. Okay, we do. We like to make sense out of things. We like yeah. to plan and make Categorize it. And, and then and, if and, then and mm -hmm. and and I ha this everything has to make sense. Why? Because we got this part of our brain and we we like to use it. Yeah, that's literally the answer to that. Okay, but it does not take us always down good paths. When we try to do the the why why yeah. that person or what, it, it, there's no answer to that, and and we just want to justify it. Yeah, yeah. That's that's really it. It's that's justification. I remember one time having a conversation with one of the kids who was living with us, who, like, his life was hard. I mean, his life was hard. You know, but I can't even. I don't even know who you're talking about yet. Which one? I know. Well, everyone. Because they, everyone all of their lives were hard. Yeah, right. Exactly. And I, it, it was it was a conversation we had on the back deck. And if I said his name, he'd be like, I oh, completely remember I this. Um, but we, and he, it, it was just kind of one of those conversations where he was very much like, this, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Like, the hits just kind of kept on t coming, right? You know, but it, it always, and I remember being sort of tough on him in, in a reframe of just, okay, you're like, you're right, that, that sucks, yeah. but you're not the only one who life sucks for. And we can sit here and like, I mean, again, you can, like I said, you can sit in it for a little while, mm -hmm. but then it's like, what are the steps out of it? What do we, how do we move forward? You know, you're really good at that. I think I've been just so forced to read it. I mean, I'm not, so true, yeah. You know, you've had a lot of practice. I've had a lot of yeah, practice. You're right. And so, um, but mm -hmm. like, what are the steps forward to coming out of, you know, these things, the hits that keep on taking? And sometimes it's even maybe not even a step forward as much as just a let's stop so that maybe we can stop the other stuff from happening or slow down the bad things or something, right? Either just close those floodgates, you know, so if it's, or what? Th this reminds me of the comedian we were listening to last night. Okay. It's Nick, what's his name? Nate Bergazzi. Bergazzi. He's funny. He's funny. He's got a new special on. And one of the things he talked about was we have part of our brain that's the smart brain and part of our brain that's the dumb brain. Yeah. And... Our dumb brain is just really dumb. Like, in his example that that he used was like, we can smile, and and then talk ourselves into being a, in a good mood. And he's like, the dumb brain was there for that conversation and that planning, <laughs> yet it still falls for it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. That that is that is part of what I think we're talking about here is when life sucks, when bad things are happening. You, you always, and I have the quote on my wall in my room, attitude is a choice. Right. It's just true. 
Yeah. You know, you, you can't. You can't fix a lot of stressors in your life. They're all they're going to be there. You you were diagnosed with cancer. That's a stressor that's not going away. But what you do have control over is your reaction to it, mm-hmm. your attitude towards it, your game plan, if you want to say well, it that my way. engagement with it, engagement with it. Right. You have a choice in all of those things, and when it comes to you know the the why not me. Um, that is an attitude adjustment. That is a an outlook on uh, the way you're perceiving something. Yeah. I think matters. Yeah. I tried to uh, handle situations in my life with that. Although, as an example, you know, when you were diagnosed with cancer, I certainly wasn't like, okay, here we go. No, for sure. Oh my lord, I couldn't breathe. I I <laughs> no. couldn't function. I didn't even couldn't find my car keys type of just in a stupor and even even weeks out at that i still oh, had no, wrapped sure. my brain around wait what what is this and but eventually yeah. eventually you know that came out in me i think anybody living through like a life change like that their spouse being ill or their whatever like literally you can be months into it and then look up one day and go, is this really my world? Like, mm-hmm. is this really happening? Yeah. You know? And then at that point, <laughs> I think that's where sometimes a diversion happens. Okay. The reality hits and now, what are you going to do? Yeah. How, how are you going to attack this or not? Or hide from this? Mm-hmm. Or do negative things in your life? Yeah. Or, yeah. or uh, divorce somebody? Uh, all of the, the, there's negative outcomes and there's positive. I, the mental thing you're talking about now is you're choosing the offense. You're choosing to go on offense. You're choosing to attack to some, and that's not true in all these, but, um, you're, you're choosing to have a positive outlook as best it can be. Yeah, it, that's interesting that you say that because one of the words I keep thinking about is optimism. And I and I don't think that like I exude optimism, but I think I'm pretty good at finding the positives out of things, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, I mean, in fact, I think there's a part of me that really just because of the cancer and everything else, I don't shy away from things that are hard or challenging, and I'll walk right into conversations and discussions. In fact, I, that's where I really like to be a lot of times, uh, talking about things that are, you know, harder. Um, but I do think it does come from all of the training I've had over the years, right, of, of dealing with it. it. Can't hurt. Yeah. You know, I mean, as with anything, the more practice we have. Yeah. Not that you want to practice shitty things going on that you no, have to No, I know, but I, I guess what I was thinking about too. with that, too, is that, like, out of that, I feel like we've built a life of kind of, like, why not us, right? So, um, one of the things we alluded to is we've had a bunch of different kids live here, you know? And I, I again, oftentimes people say, like, I, oh, that's so great of you, or I can't believe, I don't know how you do that, or whatever. And we're like, I think for us, it's how could we not do that? <laughs> How could we not know about some of these situations and be like, okay, well, good luck. <laughs> See you tomorrow at practice. <laughs> we knew right? too much. Yeah. We knew too much. Yeah. Um, and I think by wading into some of that stuff, it it has only made our lives better. Would you agree? I, I, I Well, it certainly hasn't made it worse. Um, I haven't spent a whole lot of time saying, you know, how am I enriched or a better person because, you know, Johnny stayed with us for a year or two. I don't know that, but I can't fathom, like, knowing what we knew about their situations and just turning my back to it. Okay. That, that is not a possibility. And if it happened tomorrow... It's not a possibility. I can't ignore. I give up her bedroom. Yeah, I can't ignore <laughs> that. I can't, and I, I think to some extent I was put on this earth to do that. I, I think don't so know. Too. I, I I don't know. Yeah, 
And I hope no. it's been an impactful to them, to the kids yeah. who've been here. Right. You know? Yeah, because they certainly didn't come into an environment that was all hugs and kisses and let's make your world a better place. It wasn't that. No, no, no. It was it was kind of the the why not me so. Right. And you better buy in. Yeah. Suck it up, buttercup. Yeah. It was that. I mean, that's just us. Yeah. And, I mean, not in a mean way, but it was, here's your reality. Let's, let's yeah. learn how to live a good life now. Yeah. With this being your reality. Yeah. And maybe, you know, maybe that was the practice we got with that. I don't know. Yeah. Or maybe that's yeah. just us. I don't know. I think that's just us. I think we've never done well with, like, learned helplessness, you know, no. that kind of situation. No. And um, and we've always been like, if you're going to make an effort, then we're going to help, right? But mm-hmm. um, I guess maybe that's the qualifying factor is, you know, I mean, one, asking, and two... And it's the same thing with you, you know, when people calling you or, or getting in touch with you or, or people right, asking if you, right. that's your qualification too, is they got to want this, not you for yeah, them. Yeah. And they yeah. got to try. Yeah. I don't know. I just was thinking about the why not me. Like, we get one chance at this. I, you know, and I just, I while I definitely want my life to be full of, you know, fun memories and things like that. I also want it to. Okay, so somebody's listening to this and they realize they are in a why me state right now. Yeah. What? And they would much rather not be there. <laughs> what do you do? How, how, what is step one? What is, how, how to, in a month from now, me being in a totally different place, what's your advice to that? Oh boy. I think it's thinking about what what do I have or what can I control? What do I have? What can I control? What can I do? You know? So that's what I'm talking about, the do. Yeah, the do part is what am I thinking about right now and how can I change that? Like And to do that sometimes I think we need help. Yeah. I think it's the books we read. I think sure. it's you the can... stuff we read on the internet. Yeah. I think it's movies we watch to some extent. I think it's who our best friends are and what are they putting into our heads. Absolutely. Um, All of that tends to, we we think about it. When we have a conversation with a friend or whatever, we come home and we think about that and we replay it and stuff. If that is boosting us to to be a better person, I think that rubs off on us. You know, you are your best, five best friends, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So I would give that as a recommendation is, who, who are you surrounding yourself with? Yeah, I will say, I, I very, very, very strongly believe that what you put in is what you get, like, right? So, right. Um, I know you get tired of House Hunters and HGTV, but I also, you we don't, like, watch crime drama and, and gory, blah, blah, blah. I don't need that in my brain. Like, mm-hmm. I don't, or even, I mean, for the longest time, my lord... ER was really big, which was really dating us, or Grey's Anatomy was coming out, like, when we were diagnosed, I couldn't, I wasn't watching that stuff. Like, Mm -hmm. even those little, even though fictional, when it's fictional, your brain still doesn't process it that way. Like, so, I I guess I have been very protective of my brain. I do really believe that... I do, too. What I put in is what I'm going to get out, Um, and... I would rather put in something that's mindless, that's not going to impact it um, negatively than put in something that I have to process through, <laughs> you know, from a from a standpoint. And I, I just think, I, I, I get it. People want to, like, they say it's a diversion from reality or whatever. But for me, it's, it's not. It was just, it was more work. A lot of the stuff that, you know, you can watch or... or go through or whatever that way read Mm -hmm. and honestly i mean in this day and age it's a google search of you know like i mean have the word positive in it positive or (laughs) manifesting or whatever all these things like who cares a lot of help who cares if it's like woo woo in terms of like it's it's not gonna hurt you it's not gonna hurt you to think positively (laughs) meditation meditation or to hear what you're thinking that's the other thing Mm -hmm. that i think when i'm talking about is you know either through journaling meditation is hard for people visualization like 
Google positive vis visualization. That's a guided kind of imagery type of thing where you can, it will provide the thoughts for you instead of mm -hmm. like meditation is sort of the lack of thoughts, which is, I mean, it's very difficult for me, right? Okay. So, so like. But I, I, I just said, I can't do it. I haven't practiced it. Right. And you, we're bad at everything we try for the first time yes. or the first couple well, of times. Well, that's the other thing, too. You can't get frustrated with this. Yeah. You know, if and you want the right mindset, you have to practice that. Yeah, and set a timer. I mean, do it for five minutes. Yeah. Do it for, you know, again, get out the stupid post-it notes. I've got one over there. On and my... then call your friend and just say, hey, I had this somewhat of an doing... epiphany here. Yeah. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. And this is what I want to happen in my life. Yeah. And, you know, you'd be amazed at what the power of your brain and i know we've talked a lot about that if you've listened to other episodes mm -hmm. but that's why is this whole power of the brain thing yeah so i don't know did that answer your question what would you do first i think so i would declutter my brain <laughs> i would think about what do you I have to declutter your life to declutter your brain sometimes it helps to declutter your life just because yeah. um it just it depends on so Sydney and I were talking this week about this is kind of a different um, situation. We we're talking about living in a big town and blah, 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 and just the al level of inert alertness that you need. But I just thought she really framed it well because she said it's just like kind of having an extra tab open on your computer. And you kind of always have to have it open because you need to, but it's also draining. And I feel like clutter is sort of like that too. So if you can handle five tabs, that's fine. But if you can only handle three, then like, and you're, you know, like my desk is really messy. That doesn't bother me. But if it bothers you, like clean the desk or clean mm -hmm. the junk drawer or whatever it is, you know. So it's just kind of where, for me, it's just thinking about where, what's not draining you, you know. Um, and, but if it's so overwhelming, <laughs> like everything is so out of control then then it might be again i feel like timers are wonderful for habits that we're trying to build or things we're trying to do even when the kids were little and when the house was messy and i was feeling overwhelmed i'd set the timer for 10 minutes or 15 minutes and we would all clean mm -hmm. and it was surprising what we got done in that amount of time kind of made it a game and yeah. it kind of made it a game. it was yeah. a little more fun you knew what the end was you know mm -hmm. it's like play that game with yourself you mm -hmm. know and sometimes you know you'll keep going from there or whatever but other times it is that's enough to get that those those you know tabs down to what's tolerable so yeah that's good yeah yeah so all right well i think with all of us you know it's either why me or why not me and how can i how can i take this life that i've been given and and use it you know for my good and for other people's good. Evaluate the people in your life. Are they why me or why not me people? Mm. I can list off mine. Yeah. I know who they are. I and, and we sometimes just call it positive or negative people. But spend a lot more not time with the why not me people. Yeah, the people who really are just like, oh, let's do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Have a great week. Yep. Hit it, Ty.